Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS5 video. So we now finally have the new release of ETA Hen. It is no longer in a public test phase. We finally have the full release here of ETA Hen update 2.4b. So this version includes a whole host of changes. Most of these changes we've already seen in the test builds that have been going around over the past few months. The previous version 2.3b had one major issue, the fact that it did not support higher firmwares, especially 9.x firmwares. So if you were on a 9.x firmware up to this point, you had to use the test builds which expired after a few weeks. So every now and then, every few weeks, you would have to update to the latest test build because previous ones would expire and no longer work. So if you were somebody in that situation on a 9.x firmware, you can now update to this version of ETA Hen. As you can see here, it now has full support from 8.40 to 10.01 at least for the ETA Hen and Cheats support. Now the issue is that 10.0 and 10.01 do not have a public release of K-Stuff yet, so you still cannot use K-Stuff to run your PS5 game backups or your PS4 fake packages on 10.0 and 10.01, but the toolbox and the cheats are functional on those firmwares. So before we actually jump into all of the changes, let's go ahead and look at how we can update ETA Hen to the latest release here if you're using the new YouTube jailbreak on the PS5. So first of all, you just download the bin file for the latest version from the GitHub release from Lightning Mods. And then of course, for the YouTube jailbreak, if you're using the auto loader, which most people should be using by now, then all you gotta do is simply download the y2jbupdate.zip file here for the YouTube jailbreak auto loader. And there's also a new build of items flow to go along with this ETA hen release. So go ahead and download that so you can grab this for PS5 from the Package Zone website, pkgzone.com. Also, if we go to the console section and filter for PlayStation 5 applications, we want to grab PS5 Explorer. If you do not already have this application installed, go ahead and download this for PS5. Okay, so with all of that copied over to your computer, we need to grab ourselves a USB drive that is formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format and then go into that folder. We're going to open up the y 2 jailbreakupdatezip file, take our PS5 autoloader folder and drag it into the USB, into the root of the USB, not inside any existing folders. And then we can go into that folder here and copy the ETA hen bin file into that folder. We can delete the FTP server and rename the ETA hen payload and copy the name, then open up the autoload text file in Notepad and then simply remove the FTP server payload and paste in the name of your ETA hen payload instead. And then just go ahead and save that file. File save or control S to save the file. So once that's done, if we head back into the root of the USB, we can also grab our items flow package file and copy that also to the root of the USB drive. And then also, of course, if you don't have the PS5 Explorer application, go ahead and copy that to the root of the USB drive as well. And then we can eject that USB drive and plug it in to our PS5. Okay, and once you're on the PS5, you can run the YouTube jailbreak auto loader and let that run the exploit. So with the USB drive plugged in, once it executes the jailbreak, it should then run the ETA hen payload off the USB, which will get the latest version loaded. Once it auto closes the application, we then get ETA hen starting up. And then you just give this a few seconds for it to fully initialize. Sometimes the toolbox can fail to load. If that happens, you just need to restart and try again. But other than that, you should be able to get ETA Hen loaded here, as you can see. Okay, so once you have ETA Hen loaded, we can then head into our settings. Scroll down, of course, to our debug settings. Go to the package installer. And from there, you can install your PS5 Explorer. And of course, Items Flow, the latest version that supports this version of ETA Hen. So we can just hit install all. Say yes to install the packages. And that will go ahead and update to the latest version of Items Flow and get that version installed. And it will also grab the latest version of PS5 Explorer and get that installed as well. So there we go. So once you have that now installed, we can update the auto loader on the hard drive so that we don't have to have the USB drive plugged in every time that we want to load that new version of ETA Hen when we run the auto loader. So if, to do that, we'll just run the PS5 Explorer application. Wait for this to load. We'll go root access and then we'll press right and left on the D-pad to switch to our USB drives. 
So USB zero is left on the D-pad. And then from there, we can grab our PS5 autoloader folder, press triangle on it, and then send to forward slash data. And that will copy it over to the data folder there. And that way we don't need the USB drive connected the next time we want to load ETA hen. It will just load the one from the data folder on the hard drive now. So that USB drive is no longer required. So that is us got everything updated there for ETA hen and items flow with the latest version. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new features. So we have a custom background package installer. The way this works is that you can enter a custom path. By default, it looks for the forward slash data, forward slash ETA hen, forward slash PKGS folder. That's where you can put package files and that will show up there as packages that you can install in the custom package installer. And when you select a package that you want to install using this, it will actually install it in the background instead of having a progress bar that you have to wait to complete in order for you to be able to continue using the PS5. Whereas with this version, it just installs them in the background as a background download. So you can continue using your PS5 while you're installing your package files. So that's something that's been included there with this custom background package installer. However, it does require in the services section you to have the direct package installer v2 enabled. If this option is not enabled, that custom background package installer will not work unless you're on a firmware of 5.50 or lower. So that's the requirement there for that particular package installer. Another thing that's been improved is the plugins and payload elf option. So when you enable a plugin, it no longer takes forever to actually start the plugin. It happens much faster. So if we enable this plugin, as you can see, pretty much instantly, it says it has been successfully launched. Now, if you're familiar with loading plugins on previous versions, it would say it was starting the plugin and then you'd have to wait like 10, 20 seconds or so before it would actually start the plugin. Whereas in this case, it starts the plugins much faster, which is fantastic. And of course, you still have the option to enable it in the startup menu so that it will automatically start those plugins when you load ETA hen. So the other big change is in the settings menu. We've got the game overlay menu has now been added in the official release here so that you can display your GPU utilization and temperatures. Same with your CPU, all core usage, the RAM usage, even your IP address you can have displayed in the game overlay so that it is always displayed and available to you. There's also a case stuff overlay as well, which will tell you if case stuff is enabled or disabled. Now, typically with this option off, whenever you disable case stuff in your game, it will come up with a notification saying case stuff has been paused or unpaused. That was the previous notification. But if you enable this option, it will just display some red text at the top of the screen, which will tell you if case stuff is currently disabled. And then of course, without the red text means case stuff is enabled. So you can have that instead of the notification. Personally, I'd rather just have the notification appear instead of constantly having that red text on my screen when I'm in a game. But still, it's something that you can enable if you'd rather have it. Um, but for me, I would rather leave that off. And then you can also move the location of where that overlay is to all four corners of the screen. By default, it is in the top left-hand corner. So when you run a game there, you can see we get all of the stats printed out there in the overlay. So the utilization and the temperatures are being displayed when you launch any application or a game with the overlay enabled. So that's what you've got there with that version. There's also a new case stuff menu. And this one is going to be very useful, especially when the, you know, 10.0 and 10.01 hopefully get case stuff support soon. When that happens, this could be very, very useful here. So of course, we have the option to pause case stuff in here. So you can pause it for PS4, PS5 or both PS4 and PS5 as normal. But now we have these three options. We have the option to replace case stuff with the latest case stuff version via GitHub which is excellent. So any new updates that come out for case stuff, you don't have to wait for a new ETA hen release to come out that integrates the new version of case stuff. You can just come into this menu and then just select this option and that will download the latest version. Now I'm not connected to the internet on my PS5 right now. Otherwise it would download the latest version from GitHub and then it will automatically load that version the next time you load ETA hen. So if a new version comes out that fully supports 10.0 and 10.01 with case stuff, you can just use this option to update to the latest version, reboot your PS5 and load ETA hen again, and it will then load that updated version of case stuff that supports those higher firmwares without having to wait for a new ETA hen official release to support them, which would be great. And then of course, you also have the option here to delete that version of case stuff via GitHub to go back to the built-in version in your current version of ETA hen. 
And then also you have the ability to toggle whether case stuff loads when ETA hen loads, which is obviously on by default. So that's another option you've got in there as well. So another feature that's been added here is that DPI v2 can now download local files via a URL. So this is a pretty interesting feature that's also been added. So if I enter the IP address into a web browser of my PS5 and then do colon 12800, which is the port number for the direct package installer v2, the web version, and then do forward slash, I can basically enter any file path from the local storage of my console. So for instance, let's say I want to download an image file from ETA hen that is stored on my PS5's hard drive for ETA hen. And I can do forward slash data, forward slash ETA hen, forward slash assets, and then forward slash store.png, which is the homebrew store image that is used in the ETA hen toolbox. And then I can just press enter. I just choose a location to save it to. And you can see there it gets saved. So that was downloaded directly from my PS5's hard drive over the network here using the direct package installer. So it kind of works both ways. Instead of the direct package installer just being used to install package files from your computer or another device remotely to the PS5, you can also pull stuff off the PS5 remotely as well using it uh, in the other direction, which is a pretty interesting idea. You know, you could, for instance, grab certain package files that are installed on the console and upload them to your computer directly from the PS5. So that's a pretty interesting uh, feature that's also been included in this version. So a couple of other things to mention, ETA Hen has updated to support the latest PS5 payload SDK. We also have improved cheat support. So cheats with or without zero sections are now supported. We also have the fix from the flow, which improves 2.xx PS4 package speeds. This is something I covered a while back uh, with one of the test builds that included this, which was an issue with the old Bipervisor exploit in 2.x firmwares, which would make it take much longer to load package files. That has been fixed, so that fix has been implemented in this version of ETA Hen. If you happen to be loading it on a 2.x firmware through the Bipervisor exploit. And then we also have the game decryptor being updated for the items flow dumper with the latest improvements that have been made by IdleSauce with IdleSauce's self decryptor. So that's all been implemented within ETA Hen as well, as well as the plugin loader system. It says the payload SDK elf loader is now required for ETA Hen to load. So you shouldn't really have to worry about that unless you're using an old exploit like the IPv6 exploit on 4.03, for instance, to you know jailbreak the console. Otherwise, otherwise, that's really not going to be an issue. And then also we have a timeout added for the shell UI to receive a response. Well, that should not be a problem because there's now a timeout. So it should timeout if no response is given. And that way you can keep using the console. It's not going to freeze and force you to reboot uh, whenever that happens. So that's another improvement that's been made there as well. And finally, we have some updates, of course, to the items flow application itself. So it now has full support for 9.xx firmwares. Copied folders will now be set to 0777 by default, which is just the file permissions of the files when you're copying them because there was an issue with a previous version where it wasn't necessarily setting the correct permissions. And that's one of the things that was stopping applications when they were copied from the USB to the hard drive, like your game dumps from the USB to the hard drive that would cause the black screen issue when you go to launch them. So that's now been resolved. So if you use this updated version of items flow to copy an installed application, a game dump to your internal storage from a USB. So the black screen issue should be fixed because all of the files should have the appropriate permissions to read, write and execute. So that's been added there. And finally, we also have fixed parsing PS5 XML files from the directory. So apparently that was also an issue in previous builds. So anyway, there we go. Those are the updates to ETA Hen with this latest version. A lot of you guys will be familiar with some of the updates that I've covered here from previous test builds, as a lot of this stuff has been added in test builds that have been available in the Package Zone Discord server. But the big deal about this is that finally we have a release that fully supports 9.x firmwares uh, that is not a test build that expires after a few weeks. So I'm very glad that Lightning Mods actually put out a full release of this now so that we're kind of all on the same page. And it also allows me to now make a full beginner's guide uh, that encompasses all firmwares up to 9.60 here uh, for jailbreaking the PS5 using the YouTube jailbreak. So that is excellent. So anyway, that's going to do it here for this video. So hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.